Hello, everybody. It is Dee and Renee, and we hope all of you had a super, super uh, American Thanksgiving, because I know it wasn't a Canadian Thanksgiving, but I had a great time, and I know that a lot of people posted in Dee's recipes about all the great things they were making um, from the holiday posts and the holiday shows that we've done, so it's super exciting. We love to see when you cook up one of Dee's recipes and uh, put it put it out here on the low carb page or over in Dee's recipes, we love that, don't we, Dee? Love it, love it, love it. Soup. There were so many soup makers. I was so happy. So sometimes the most simple recipes, you know, they get the they get the gold stars. So that was awesome. I was really excited to see that. I know. I'm. I have soup on my list of things. I'm actually in one place for like ten days, so I have soup on my in my Instacart. I don't know if uh, anybody has signed up for the Instacart, um, but definitely it is like my favorite way to get my groceries. Okay, so let's see who's online here. Uh, okay, so uh, everything looks. So yummy, working, but we'll catch up later. Awesome. Thanks for checking in with us. June says, looks amazing. And uh, Rachel is from Missouri. And Christine is from Florida. All right, you guys. Thanks for checking in. And remember that today's recipes, um, oh, we got Deb here. Hey, Deb. Um, yeah. We uh, today's recipes will be up later, probably more like tomorrow. But all you have to do is type in the word recipe and they will be coming to you. So one of the things that we've done is we've made sure that in the photo album, when you go to the photo albums, you'll always see a photo album for each of our shows. And then uh, within hopefully 24 hours, we've got the recipe cards posted. A lot of times I go back through and post the recipes just under the picture too, just so that we can get them out to you as quickly as possible. So first things first, little housekeeping. Can you push the share button? The share gives us a bigger reach and shares our show out to so many more people. And also if there's something in particular that you like and love, please push the like and heart button. All righty, D. Let's uh let's see what D's been cooking up a storm this this week and and uh so all of this looks super delicious and um so let's see here. I always up oh, there we go. So D made all these fancy fancy things that you can take to holiday parties and the cool thing is you don't have to feel left out when everybody's eating all of their little goodies. So um, before we get to each one, why don't you tell us what's on this lovely platter? So to the first one, to, to my left, I guess to everybody's left, that is a Cajun shrimp over macamole. And so I have been making macamole since 2011 and it's of an asparagus macamole and I just keep tweaking it as I go. I just keep adding things um, that I like. So honestly, in my kitchen, every time I make it, it's a little bit different. Um, but um, this one was a really spicy version um, to go with the Cajun shrimp. So it's just simply Cajun spice shrimp on macamole on a cucumber um, for its base. So, of course, we're leaving out any bread themed, cracker themed, snow baguettes. Um, we're going all just um, protein and low carb veggies here for you. Um, the middle one is an oriental meatball. So again, really super easy, has a little bit of cabbage and a little bit of green onions. And then our oriental sesame sauce so super easy super tasty really easy to do and then the last one you see there is what i like to call a chicken fajita slider um so they almost look like little pizzas but the base is chicken it's ground chicken and so on a lot of low carb sites um i know you've all seen cauliflower pizza crust but I really dislike cauliflower pizza crust. However, ground chicken <laughs> spiced up makes an awesome faux crust. So I had seen that on a graphic somewhere before and thought I have to try that. 
So that is um, like a Southwest chicken fajita, just layered. So you have your ground chicken, homemade salsa, you have the green and, um, yeah, or sorry, orange and yellow peppers. Um, they can give the look of cheese. And then a couple of them actually have a little sprinkling of cheese on them. So if you're in phase three or four, then that is um, the perfect topping. And then just a little garnish um, of cilantro. So the beautiful oh. thing about all of them, they're completely family, friend, whatever friendly. Like they're, 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 they're delicious. And so it's, it's not diet food. So <laughs> it's just good food. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so interesting because um, we all get used to putting things on a cracker or crostinis or a little, you know, baguettes or what have you. And actually, once I started eating a, a low carb lifestyle, which was about almost 20 years ago in my in my late 30s, um, and uh, I really realized that, you know, I can have my eggs Benedict on a slice of big heirloom tomato. I can, you know, have all of these little goodies on different, you know, on slices of cucumber or whatever kind of veggie that you love. And, and it's really tasty and enjoyable. Sure. So those are, those are things we can get rid of all that bread and stuff that makes us feel all kind of crappy later and, and eat things that, that give us good energy. Yeah. All right, so if you're out there, type the word recipe if you want the recipes and share, share, share. Hit the like and heart button for things that you love. All right, Dee, so um, we talked a little bit about some of these, but these really, I mean, who could who could not love some asparagus macamole? And the first time I heard about that, I was like, that just sounds gross. But when a customer of mine actually brought it to me, I was like, OMG, that's a, it's a game changer. It's so good. And the neat thing about the asparagus macamole is it's literally so fast. So if any of you watched my little mini Facebook live yesterday before today, you may have seen the blanched um, asparagus just hanging out in my blender. Um, Cause I, it, this is, I was constructing things really, really fast. And once you make it once, um, you'll never need to look at a recipe again. It is that easy. So I simply just blanch my asparagus. I like it. Don't make it too wilty because I don't because I don't want mushy macamole. I want it pretty, you know, I want that same texture as the avocado is going to give. And then I simply put my garlic and my lime and my heat. Now, and the neat thing about heat, if you don't have cayenne pepper, doesn't matter. Put some jalapenos. If you don't have jalapenos, put hot sauce. If you don't have hot sauce and so on and so forth. So you don't need to have like a specific ingredient list. I mean, sometimes I have the cilantro and red onion and tomato to chop up and put in there fresh. Sometimes I might be missing one, but I don't care. I still just <laughs> whip it together and um, you can leave olive oil out or you can put a little bit of olive oil in if you need a creative way to get your oil in there. And the same thing, you can, you know, add it based on your base cup of veggies. So if you know you want a cup of macamole with two teaspoons of oil, then go for it and you can build your recipes like that. Uh, the Cajun shrimp on top, um, the, the, the heat from the macamole works perfectly with the heat from the Cajun shrimp because I did use some cayenne um, on that Cajun shrimp and also in my macamole. And those shrimps are so fast. You can pre-marinate them or not, like your choice. You do not need any oil. Um, that's the beautiful thing about them too. And so you have your thawed shrimp, um, either pre-cooked or not. And you, you're simply just going to sear them in a hot pan till they're opaque on each side. It takes minutes, just, just minutes. And the cucumber base is so easy and it keeps it so fresh. And we are so spoiled out here. Um, Red Cliff, Alberta is the greenhouse capital of Canada. And the greenhouses are still producing veggies in almost December. So it's kind of unheard of. They usually shut down in the very cold, cold winter months because it's, of course, you can imagine how expensive it is to heat a greenhouse to produce vegetables when you hit temperatures in the minus 30s and sometimes even 40. So, um, so super lucky that I can still have access to super fresh veg. And so super light, super refreshing. 
<laughs> and you could eat that as your veggie and eight ounces of protein. And pictured there, I kid you not, is only four ounces of shrimp. And um, it didn't even use a cup of, of macamole. So you could eat so much fresh, healthy food, um, either as an entree or you as part of your part of your appies. And so you're probably going to get full before you have a chance to overeat. Yeah, for sure. For mm -hmm. sure. So uh, this looks like a lot of a lot, a lot of shrimps here. <laughs> Okay, so next up, um, these look, you know, I, I love a good meatball. <laughs> I just took a bad picture. <laughs> I put my That's okay. I, I put my little toothpickies in there and then they really weren't camera friendly, but I didn't pull them <laughs> all out. But or again, oriental meatballs, you know, you could use ground beef, ground turkey, ground chicken. Um, they would all work. Um, the oriental sesame um, dressing from IP is what I used as my base with some extra garlic, a little bit extra Bragg's aminos, um, green onions, and some shredded cabbage, uh, and one egg. And so for tip, it will be in the rest recipe, but for tipsters, so I used 6.5 ounces of ground beef and one large egg, which is 1.5 ounces of protein to equal 8 ounces. So I'm starting with, the, I, you know, I designed the recipe so that it's eight ounces. And then you can split it out from there. So if you eat half of it, then it's four. If you eat a quarter of it, then it's two. So really easy as well, too. So then I know, you know what, I'm going to eat eight of these shrimp appies, and I'm going to eat ten of these meatballs, and I'm going to get to have four of these chicken appies and be at my eight ounces again. So... That sounds, yeah, that, yeah. Uh, you, yeah. you do have to know how to do your math for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? These look like they would be delicious on uh, on top of some zucchini zoodles or you could incorporate them into a cauliflower rice stir fry. Mm -hmm. um, you could put them, you could uh, actually put them maybe chopped up on top of your pizza crust that you were talking about and, yes. and incorporate them that way. So they they look like there's a lot of different different things that we could do with them. Well, All right, so let go ahead. Oh, well, even your zucchini idea. So just like the shrimp are on a slice of cucumber, that those would be awesome on a slice of zucchini. Because the zucchini yeah. is virtually tasteless, but would give it a nice fresh base as well. Right, right. Yeah. Love it. Okay, so let's say hello to Penny from BC. She can't wait for your recipes. Um, let's see here. It says, Deb says, is there a limit to how many shrimp we can have? So you're, you're, you mean in a week or in like your eight ounces? Shrimp is part of your protein. Um, so you could have that, um, you know, I don't I never recommend that you eat the same protein source um, daily um, or weekly. It's always good to switch it up a little bit. So even if you're switching up even just the fish family. So eight ounces of shrimp, again, you're always measuring raw, um, all your protein raw. So not, not I'm not sure, Deb. <laughs> Be more specific. Do you have a more specific one, and then we can? Yeah. Okay. We can go from there. Deb, Deb, let us know what you really mean there. Uh, Marion says uh, she hearts macamole. She's made it for her friends, and they had no clue that it was not avocado. I totally agree with you. And it's nice okay. and green, nice and green, and gorgeous. Mm -hmm. All righty. So everybody take a moment to hit the share button and share this out to all your friends. And if you are an ideal protein clinic, please share this on your Facebook page. Um, the next thing up is that third appetizer on that uh, tray that we saw earlier. And these just look gorgeous and delicious. They're really good. Um, the really neat thing about them too is of course, you know, you're playing again, you're I use plain ground chicken as the base and the same thing. I did start with 6.5 ounces of ground chicken because I did add an egg and then my spices because it's just the easiest way to build for me um, so that I know no matter how many appies I get out of that, then I'm just going to be dividing out um, what I don't need to use right away or what I want to save for later. Um, and really, 
it's just like a little mini pizza crust. And so your toppings are, again, endless. I just kept it really simple because I wanted mine to taste um, like a chicken fajita. And they do. And so, you know, simple, pretty. Um, and the ground chicken makes <clears throat> so like a solid enough base that you pick it up. It doesn't fall apart. So you can, you know, it's it's like you're eating something off of a cracker, except it's even better because it doesn't crumble and break apart and all your toppings don't land all over your lap and your clothes. So there is another win win for leaving the bread and the crackers to the side. Chicken is king. <laughs> there, there we go. And and Deb clarified. She says, can you eat all 16 appetizers in one sitting? So we'll we'll touch on that. So you will design your you you could if you wanted to i mean if you used eight ounces of shrimp and made that's not even eight ounces in that picture deb you could actually eat more um, of that that wasn't eight ounces of shrimp so you could measure out your shrimp first and then make as many appies as you wanted with your shrimp and veggies and yes eat it all so just depending on or you or you could have a variety and have uh, some of each of the three just depending yeah. Um, okay, so we are going to move on from the appetizers, and, and this is kind of like a two-part picture. Yeah. This is the uh, before picture, and this just sounds delicious. I love all your overnight recipes because it just means that in the morning you don't have to get up and, you know, even work about what you're going to have in the morning. It's all set and ready for you. And I really should have put a tape measure across that dish to actually show you how generous it is. Um, so in that picture, there is three servings there, but they're very generous servings. And when this recipe gets posted, um, it's going to have some variations in it. And I'm going to, and you know, Renee has, Renee helps me in my recipe writing because I write things and just assume that you're going to know what I mean. <laughs> and it doesn't <clears throat> always work that way. So. This is a recipe that you can have a lot of creativity with. So for one, you could use any ideal protein bread um, as your base. And so in, in pictured is a, just a bread made out of the plain pancake. Really simple bread. I wasn't worried about having lots of sweetener or flavoring in it because, of course, I'm looking to get the flavor out of the next step of my recipe. But any bread would work. And you're going to need to know the nutritional values of your bread that you choose. So in this recipe, it was simply one bread or one um, pancake packet. So one ideal um, protein serving is what I started with. Then I decided I'm gonna do a bigger pan. So I doubled my bread recipe and then I used a third IP product for my cream. So I used the vanilla ready-made and then it is whisked in with eggs and um, nutmeg and cinnamon and you can use any flavored sweeteners to customize it you could use the IP maple syrup you could use two eggs three eggs four eggs it depends on what type of a breakfast you are building do you need a bigger breakfast are you in phase two are you in maintenance do you like the taste of eggs um, in an overnight casserole or do you want to more taste um, the bread and the and the sweetener so you have a lot of wiggle room on this one so you build it just like traditional overnight oatmeal or sorry french toast and so you put your bread cubes in the bottom and you mix up your your eggs and your traditional one would use cream and sugar and spices so where you i use the um, ip vanilla drink and eggs, and then I use a little bit of IP maple syrup, and I stayed the traditional clove, nutmeg, and cinnamon um, for my topping. So you simply pour that over your cubed bread, and you cover it in overnight, and let your goodness soak into your bread, and then bake it in the morning. So, or in the evening for supper, or you could let it sit for six hours, or you can let it sit for 16 hours, and it will still turn out. Um, if you like it crispy and crusty, you take the cover off and let it crisp and cover off, um, let it crisp up. If you don't like it crispy, you like it nice and soft, you bake it with the cover on the whole time. So, so many, so many options. Love <laughs> it, love it. So. And, and you know what? I love, love, love breakfast for dinner. Yes. So, 
Yay. All right. So, um, of course, last but not least, I say I always save the things that like I'm really kind of sort of attached to for the end. <laughs> These just look like real truffles. And I have to tell you, over Thanksgiving was my birthday. So I did have a couple chocolate truffles. But I am in maintenance and I'm uh, now it, getting myself back together for those couple of pounds that I, I gained over the Thanksgiving holiday. <laughs> well, these truffles will not make you gain weight <laughs> as long as you stay within their <laughs> required recipe. So again, anybody who's watched some of our previous videos or, you know, checks into Dee's recipes, I am a fan of the raspberry chocolate bar. And we talked, and I have to tell you, and I'm going to apologize to you all. So after I gave you all the lecture on the raspberry chocolatey bar, <laughs> Ideal Protein released some more information on that bar and then, you know, did attach a note to coach's discretion on that. So if your coach has told you something different, that is fine. <laughs> we can, we'll communicate and um, deal with it. Um, however, how we traditionally use it is we use it, it replaces a, a restricted item of your day and all, you can only have it one time per week. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's the raspberry chocolatey temptation bar. It's a solid um, dark chocolate bar with little dried raspberry bits in it and you're allowed to have them one time per week in place of your restricted. Um, there is a little bit of new information on that. I'm not going to go into it here because it just it's going to cause confusion. But if your coach has different information for you, that's just know that that's okay. And so it melts down like a dream. So I love making things with it. I love using it as an icing. I like using it as a filler. I like to make other treats out of it. And it works perfect to make um, chocolate truffles. And so... I simply melt it down over a simple double boiler. I paint the melted chocolate in my mold, let it firm up with the frit in the fridge, and then make my filling. So here is the thing with filling. Sky is the limit. You could fill those chocolate truffles with Walden Farm jam. You could fill them with just ideal protein maple syrup and nothing else, and just put it back in the fridge to firm. What you see there is you, it is the ideal protein vanilla drink mix powder. So the dry powder, and then it's flavored with sugar-free syrup is what it's flavored with. So the white ones are peppermint and the yellow ones are eggnog. And, eggnog. and you can make your filling to the consistency that you like. So if you like really firm filling, you don't need a lot of sweetener. If you like a little bit more runny, then you can add a little bit um, more liquid sweetener. So the ones pictured have two, one fluid ounce of liquid sweetener and one tablespoon of milk um, to make my inside cream. And sky's the limit on flavor. You were just simply getting what I had in my house <laughs> available. <laughs> So is this and, like a, is this like a, a Da Vinci syrup or or yeah. that type of thing? Yeah, you can use okay. Skinny Girl, Da Vinci, Tarani, any yeah. liquid um, sugar-free sweetener. And the great thing about those, I mean, I never push, I never push sweeteners, but one fluid ounce is typically a serving of that sweetener, and that's all you need to make um, a, a, a truffle like consistency filling and like I said you can use other other like let your imagination um roll here but like ideal maple syrup <clears throat> excuse me ideal proteins maple syrup I think Walden Farms as well like a quarter cup is a serving so you can make some tasty morsels a lot you know and not use a quarter cup of syrup in those so they are fun to make um one bar made is there a dozen in that picture or more I'm trying to think of my mold. Say anyway, super 11. generous. There's so more than, there's more than 12 there, and it yeah, uh, yeah. Um, they look, they look amazing, and and um, you know, obviously they take a little time, so you have to be patient, but it uh, it gives you some options for the holidays that 
You can be, ha instead of eating your peanut butter bar, you can have a truffle. That sounds amazing. <laughs> and another thing too, when it comes to, so this is a season, it's already starting, but I was baking with my kids or I was baking with my grandchildren. Okay, no problem. So let's have a recipe for them and let's have a recipe for you. So if you're taking the time to do that kind of prep, for you know, other members of your family or loved ones, and take a little bit of time to do it for yourself. You know, maybe you're gonna take it on like it's kind of like making a craft. <laughs> it's it's what? it's really it's really simple. Like it's it's simple to do. Um, it just it does. If your pet's gonna if you have you know pets gonna around in your kitchen a little bit, you just simply need you know a few minutes in between for your chocolate to chill so that it works out. The other nice thing about them is is that once they're made, they're not going to go bad. They can stay in a sealed container for a long, long, long time. So that's, you can make them ahead. They are pretty, they taste good. Um, and then, you know, if you want that special treat. Um, so here's the other thing that is using an unrestricted, if you're using protein powder, that is an unrestricted pack and it is your restricted for the day. So it, kind of, it takes two products out of the mix. So let's talk about your day then. So I'm going to tell you to plan out your day so if you really want to treat like this let's plan your day what else do you need in your day to get you through i'm going to probably tell you you're going to need lots of unlimited veggies on the, on board that day so that you can do other snacking and plus your four cups i'm going to maybe recommend you know a hot soup broth with with um some veggies in it um to make your tummy feel full same with hot teas um, lots of liquid, maybe a BCA, B, you know, branched chain amino acids. If you don't use those, I'm going to recommend that you do. It's like you feel like you're having a whole nother um, IP product, like a juice to um, keep you satisfied. So um, pickles, pickle juice, all those kind of things. So when you want that special treat, just plan out the rest of your day so that you're not going to short yourself or feel hungry anywhere. Yeah. And then and it's also a day when you could have your raspberry jelly or your cranberry pomegranate because those are an, an extra you can have a couple of times per week. They're just collagen based products. So um, that's another thing you could make your raspberry jello too. Renee, you could probably put raspberry cooled raspberry jello inside those. <laughs> we just made a new truffle. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put hot. You'll melt. You'll yeah, melt your chocolate. But you could raspberry <laughs> chocolate truffles with raspberry filling. I mean, come on. How how much? Yeah, better? reduce the amount of water in your Jello. Cool it. Fill them. Ta-da! Then you've got chocolate jellies. I love it. <laughs> oh my god! You know, one thing I had to say is our thirty minutes goes so fast every week. And um, if you guys didn't have a chance to. Uh, watch the holiday tips show. It was on Thanksgiving morning. D and I, um, I think I might even be, am I wearing my pajamas? I don't even remember, but uh, <laughs> we were doing holiday tips. No, I was not wearing my pajamas. So you had to be on my inner circle to get me in my pajamas. But uh, anyway, um, D, give us a couple of tips for uh, this is the week after Thanksgiving. If you had a little indulgence or if you're just getting restarted or if you made it on through, give us give us a few tips um, for this week following the holiday. So if you had some slip ups, whether they were intentional or unintentional, um, you just um, refocus and go hard. So you're going to need a lot of water. You're going to need a lot of salt. You're going to, and uh, we do have some excellent information on that. I think that a lot of us were, were sharing that. So just know if a little something did sneak in that you may be experiencing hunger, nausea, cravings, the general not feeling well. Um, so just know that that's normal and you got to push back through. Um, and same thing is maybe if you were eating out in restaurants and you're not feeling that great right now, maybe there was just some unintentional um, deviations in some um, dressings or spices or, um, you know, how things are prepared or prepackaged. Don't stress about it. Don't worry about it. Get back on track. Um, focus. Um, the unlimited veggie list is your friend. So anytime that I see a comment that, you know what, I've been clean and I'm starving. 
I'm going to be a little bit preachy here. You're not starving if you're in clean phase one because your body is pulling all its nutritional needs from your stored fat. Your body is being fed. Your body doesn't know that you are limiting its calories because when you're in ketosis, it's living off your fat stores. It's that it's plain and simple. It's being fed. It does not mean that you might not, that, that you don't have cravings. Cravings are very real for a lot of people and they sometimes mask as hunger. You need to be willing to have that unlimited veggie list um, in your back pocket, you, you know, pickles, pickle juice, extra water, extra salt. So anytime you say, I'm feeling hungry, you need to reach for those first. And you do need the extra water and salt um, to go along with those. And we're going to preach that to you over and over and over and over again. And if you say, no, no, like I am really hungry, maybe a little something did sneak in and it does start the hunger and the cravings again. So you're going to have to be really diligent about keeping it clean and forging forward. And don't worry about it. Don't stress about it. Just keep going. So we like to refer to, you know, if you drop your phone and you have a crack in your phone case, you don't throw it back down and stomp the crap out of it to finish it off, right? You pick it up and you brush it off and you're like, please, please work for me, right? So work for yourself, right? Keep, keep putting that time in. Also, for those of you that might not be in a losing phase, but are in a maintenance phase, we're still doing mindful daily um, meal planning and preparing. I'm going to always encourage you to journal. Even if you're not doing complete food journaling, maybe journal at the end of the day still. So what you ate, your thoughts, your feelings, um, your general um, your general feelings, uh, what you need to accomplish tomorrow, get everything out and on paper um, so that it's not rolling around in your brain. Yeah. So true. So true. Such, such, such great words of advice, uh, Dee. Thank you always. And uh, we have a few. Uh, Marion says, thanks for sharing the great ideas to get us through the holidays and beyond. Thank you. And Joanne, uh, thanks, ladies, for your pep talk. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> All right, you guys. Um, thank you so much for always watching. Be sure to hit the share button. And uh, we will be back next week, next Wednesday. D will be, uh, I, don't, I don't even know if we've, we've thought about what we're doing next week, but it's going to be awesome. <laughs> All right, D. <laughs> All right. See you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Have a great week.